Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today I want to talk about thyroid medication and your dose and why you can't stay on the same thyroid medication and dose forever, or rather why it's very unlikely for that to be the case. I mean, I suppose it's always a possibility, but um, it's probably not the reality. So we're going to dive into that. We're going to talk about it uh, more in detail, and I'm going to talk about some specific situations and conditions which make influence your dose uh, positively or negatively, um, which uh, if you have any of these conditions, it may require you to either up your dose or down your dose. So let's talk about this. First of all, this information applies to anybody who is taking any sort of thyroid medication. It doesn't matter if you're on T4 only, doesn't matter if you're on NDT or some formulation such as NP thyroid or Armour thyroid. Also, it doesn't matter if you're taking T3 only. This applies to all types of thyroid medication and it applies to anybody who is taking thyroid medication for any reason whether you have a thyroid or not, and so on. I always get questions like that, so it's important to clear it up. So first of all, thyroid dosing is not constant. So what I see happen a lot, and I've actually had this question on my blog many times, um, this is a scenario that I'll see. Somebody who is taking, let's just hypothetically create a dose here of 120 milligrams of Armour Thyroid. So let's say you're taking 120 milligrams of Armour Thyroid. You've been on this dose for four or five years. Everything's going good. You start off on a lower dose. You got up to this, this dose of 120 you know, life is good, quality, your hypothyroid symptoms are, let's say, non-existent, everything's going good. Then suddenly, something happens. You start to feel a little bit poorly, your hair starts to come out, you're, you know, you start feeling a little bit colder than you would normally, maybe a little more constipation. You start to experience the symptoms of hypothyroidism, and you're thinking to yourself, what changed? Was it the medication? What's going on? Well, this probably harkens back to your dose. Um, and a lot of people, I think, incorrectly believe that once they find whatever dose is working for them with their medication, they can just stay on this dose forever. But that is not the case. So we're going to, obviously we're going to explain that, but let's talk a little bit about why that isn't the case. So first of all, the demand for thyroid hormone in your body um, changes from day to day and based off the conditions and, and other variables that you, you know, conditions you, that are, occur in your body. So for instance, for instance, a couple, one, one major example is your metabolism. So the amount of thyroid hormone that your body needs is going to be largely dependent upon your metabolism, but also heat production. But we'll focus on metabolism here for just a second. And there are many things, as you probably know, which can influence your metabolism and either make it go higher or make it go lower. And all of those things are going to influence your dose of thyroid medication. So if you're doing something that's going to damage your metabolism and make it lower, then you may need to compensate for that with more and higher um, thyroid medication. So we're going to go over some specific examples, but I just want to introduce that to you um, right now. Now, what is happening normally, why this generally isn't an issue for you, as long as you have a functioning thyroid gland, is that your thyroid can make changes as it needs to from day to day. So let's say one day it produces 100 micrograms of T4, I'm just making these numbers up, um, and 5 micrograms of T3, and that's what your body needs. But then let's say you get really stressed out or you get really sick. Well, maybe it needs less thyroid hormone. So instead of producing 100, now it produces 90 and, and, and 5 micrograms of T3. But it makes that change on its own. You're not doing anything. You're not consciously in charge of this. It's just occurring in the background day to day, and it just happens without you ever thinking about it. Okay, but what happens when you start taking thyroid medication? Whenever you take thyroid medication, again, any type, your body is suppressing, um, that medication is suppressing your body's ability to now control and regulate thyroid hormone in the way that I just described. And it does that through its suppression or reduction in thyroid stimulating hormone, otherwise known as TSH. So TSH, what it's supposed to do normally is it stimulates the hormone that, or stimulates the gland. That's why it's called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. That's what it stands for. But if you're taking medication and you're suppressing that TSH, meaning that TSH is dropping, that what that is an indication is that your body is no longer able to compensate for it, right? Because if it wants to produce more thyroid hormone, what it does is it what it does is it increases your TSH to stimulate the gland to produce more. But it can't do that if it's too low, um, or honestly, if it's just within range, because normally it's going to pump it out as it sees fit. So this isn't a bash on people that have low TSH or anything like that. Um, I just want you to be aware of how this physiology works. So anytime you're taking thyroid medication, the bottom line is it's interfering with your body's ability to compensate. And what does that mean for you? It means you have to be the one to make to make that compensation, right? So if one of those things happen and your body would normally, let's say, increase the amount of T4 or T3 that it's producing, well, it can't do that because you're taking thyroid medication. So that means you have to do it, you and your doctor or whatever, whoever's um, helping you with your medication and your dose. So let's talk about those factors which do this because they're going to happen um, and they're 
they're, they're, you're going to run into them if you're taking thyroid medication. It's just un, unrealistic to assume that you're going to be on your dose, you're going to be fine, and you can just stay on that dose forever. So you are going to have to make these changes throughout your life, pretty much no matter what. So I have a list here of, um, I would say, fairly common factors that I see which influence dosing in thyroid patients. And again, you'll run into all, some or all of these or at, at some point in your life. So number one would be age. Um, not number one in terms of important, just number one in that just the first thing we're going to talk about here. Um, and, and age, what happens as you age is the demand for thyroid hormone in your body tends to decrease over time. So if you looked at people who were in their 20s and you looked at people who were in their 80s, you would see a, a much higher uh, concentration of thyroid hormone in those who are younger compared to those who are older. And that's assuming they have a healthy thyroid gland. So I, I find this to be generally true. So if you were, let's say you were on the same dose 20, you know, 20 years ago, it's unlikely 20 years in the future that you're going to need that dose. You might need a smaller dose or, or it could say the same. So it's not universally true, but generally the amount of thyroid hormone that you need as you get older is going to slightly decline. And we're not talking a big percentage here, maybe 5 to 10%, you know, when you're past like age 50 or 60. So if you're less than 50, this is probably not an issue for you, but still something you should consider. Now, this one, number two, is important, and that is stress. So stress is something that I find uh, as, as, a main, as a main factor which can influence the amount of thyroid that you need, e either positively or negatively. So typically what happens is the more stress that you are under, especially acute or sudden stress, um, generally requires an increase at least for that short uh, duration of time. So if you're under like, let's say, a uh, a really big uh, deadline at work and you have, you know, this, you know, this deadline is going to go away in 30 days or something like that. And for those 30 days, it's going to be more stressful. You're going to probably get less sleep. You're going to require more energy and output from your brain. Um, all of those things are going to increase the demand of thyroid hormone. However, there are some times when stress ne necessitates a reduction in your dose. And that tends to occur uh, depending on how cortisol is functioning and other factors and other hormones in your body. But um, stress is something that many of you here are going to obviously experience, um, and that that's more much more likely, I would say, than age to impact your dose in some way. So just be vigilant. And what I say, if you if you, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. But when you hit a stressful event or any of these events, by the way, it's a good time to uh, check your thyroid labs and to see how far you've deviated from whatever the normal is for you. So stress is another big one. Another big one as well is weight gain. So if you're gaining weight. Uh, pretty much from any cause, it's most likely going to require an increase in your dose. Um, and the reason for that is simple. When you gain weight, you you have more mass on your body, you have more tissue. These tissues need more. They you know obviously they they now require more energy production, um, and they uh, require more nutrients and things like this. So thyroid hormone uh, usually goes up in those cases. And so if you have gained weight recently, even I would say as a uh, few as 10 pounds or so. You probably want to look at your thyroid hormone to see if you need to make any adjustments. And again, typically that means an increase in the dose that you have. Uh, another big one is weight loss. So there's two th two ways to look at this. So first of all, the the if you're losing weight the healthy way, generally that means you need less dose, right, or a smaller dose, because we just said if you if you gain weight, you probably need a higher dose. So you would think to yourself, oh well, if I if I lose weight, I probably don't need as much. Uh, semi-true. And uh, it's true in the sense that if you do it the right way, if you do it the healthy way, then yes, your dose will probably need to be decreased. However, most of you probably, I shouldn't say most, but but there are probably a lot of you listening to this uh, who have probably lost weight the unhealthy way. And so I, what I, I differentiate it by saying rapid and unhealthy weight loss typically re, uh, results in an increase in demand for thyroid hormone if you've done it the wrong way. And the wrong way has to do with some of the other things that we'll talk about in just a sec, such as dieting and calorie restriction. But just realize any weight loss doesn't necessarily mean that you can reduce your dose. If it's a healthy way, yes. If it's the unhealthy way, you'll probably need a higher dose to fix the, the damage that you've done to your metabolism in the process. So moving on to the second one kind of ties in here, and that is dieting. But specifically, I want to talk about calorie restriction. And most people... Most people, I would say, when they think of dieting, they're thinking of reducing calories. Now, the right way to think about dieting is just, you know, the lifestyle and the foods that you eat. The wrong way to think about it is, you know, um, how many calories you're actually consuming. So if you are, as it pertains to your thyroid, if you're reducing your calories on a consistent and daily basis, that is most likely going to cause... Um, especially if it's long enough, I shouldn't say most likely, it almost definitely will cause um, an increase in demand for thyroid hormone, but not just any thyroid hormone, usually higher levels of T3. And the reason for that is calorie restriction impacts peripheral thyroid uh, conversion, and that's what causes all these problems. 
Um, so that's another important one. So weight loss, weight gain, and dieting you should be very, very familiar with. So if you need to, go back and read through these ones so you understand exactly what I'm trying to say here. The next one would be chronic medical conditions. So these are not acute medical conditions. Things like if you just get the flu or, or something for a couple weeks, even if it hits you pretty hard, let's say, you know, you get... Um, some sort of upper respiratory infection, and you're out for two to four weeks or a sinus infection, that's probably not going to have a major impact on your thyroid. I mean, it might temporarily, but only a couple percentage points, so you probably don't need to make any changes there. But what if it's chronic? Chronic meaning ongoing, and you have it for a long time, especially if the chronic medical conditions have a component of um, or have an inflammatory component to them. So things like high blood pressure, high blood pressure, excuse me, high cholesterol, metabolic syndrome, um, these sort of condi or other autoimmune conditions, by the way. So all of these things have an inflammatory component to them, and these are most likely, the more that you have and you start stacking them on top of each other, if you have a list of medical conditions when you go into your doctor, the more medical conditions you have, the more likely these are to interfere with your thyroid. So it's not like any one is necessarily bad or worse than the other, um, but the more that you have and they tend to stack on top of each other, that's when they start to become a problem. So if you started, let's say, 10 years ago, and you're on 100, like the hypothetical dose we talked about of 100 and 20 milligrams of armor and in the last 10 years you've you know acquired let's say a couple extra medical conditions well that is almost certainly going to impact the amount of thyroid hormone that you need um, another one would be supplements so we're moving down the list we have supplements these are just over-the-counter supplements most of the time if you're using supplements correctly like the ones that I recommend then these are going to have a positive impact on thyroid function now they might not necessitate a change in your dose but they're the whole goal especially how I recommend supplementation with your with your um, with your thyroid or for your thyroid is to enhance the normal thyroid function and you can do that by providing your body with certain nutrients that it can use or that it requires to to use thyroid hormone you can t take things that will reduce inflammation so these are things that will pr um, lift uh, or, or um, what's what am I trying to say here um, they'll, they'll indirectly improve thyroid by blocking other conditions. So things like reducing inflammation can help your thyroid indirectly. Or they can act on other things such as cortisol, so other hormones that may be negatively impacting your thyroid. So and if you use any of those supplements, then it's actually a good thing, those supplements that are benefiting your thyroid in some way. Now, you can use the wrong supplements or bad supplements, or you can use them at the wrong time, and those can interfere with thyroid medication absorption, which can negatively impact your thyroid, but not directly. It's more of an absorption sort of issue. So that's the supplements thing. Just make sure you're using the right type of supplements, good supplements, so, and um, and once if you if you have thyroid disease, in my opinion, they should be directed at your thyroid because you'll get the you'll get better results in that way. Uh, next would be prescription medications. So prescription medications are notorious for um, blocking thyroid hormone. Um, they can some do have a positive effect, but especially if you're using it for the right way to help, like let's say help you lose weight. Well, in that way, it's not directly impacting your thyroid, but it could indirectly help your thyroid uh, function naturally by by reducing your weight, right? Um, but most medications, I would say, n potentially negatively impact your thyroid. Things like high blood pressure medications, um, antidepressants are another big one. Um, sometimes. Um, anti-diabetic medications, so blood sugar medications and, and so on. These And these are medications that a lot of people are taking. Um, so just be aware, uh, again, kind of goes back to what I was saying previously. If you, 10 years ago, if you were on zero medications and now you're on three or four medications, well, you need to evaluate your, your thyroid dose. Any sort of intestinal issue as well, which is the next one here, um, can impact how well your thyroid is functioning, how what your dose needs to be. They can do that by either directly impacting how much medication your, your body is capable of absorbing, but also if you have any sort of inflammatory conditions in the gastrointestinal tract, those can also uh, reduce T4 to T3 conversion, especially in the gut. And we know that uh, about 20% or so of uh, com thyroid hormone conversion occurs in your gastrointestinal tract. So again, inflammatory conditions can impact that negatively. Um, and any sort of condition in the gut can impact absorption. Um, another one, and I'm talking, is that would be the severity of your thyroid condition. So in this one, I'm talking specifically about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, and, and the reason for that is Hashimoto's is one of those conditions which can worsen over time. So again, if we go back to our original uh, original example, if you, let's say 10 years ago, you diagnosed with Hashimoto's and you start on your medication, well, you you might have had some function of, thi of your thyroid gland uh, in the beginning of your disease with Hashimoto's, but that disease progression might have, or that uh, disease might have progressed and the damage that was done to your thyroid may have gotten worse over that period of time, and now you're going to need a higher dose later on. So just be aware of that. 
And then, of course, we kind of already alluded to this, but systemic inflammation. So inflammation from any cause can definitely impact your dose. So typically, the higher inflammation that you have, the more inflammation in your body, um, the more, the higher the dose you're going to need. But usually, that means you're going to need a higher amount of T3, so not just, not just any amount of thyroid hormone. So those are, I would say, the main conditions. So whenever, I, whenever somebody comes to me and they're saying, suddenly, you know, suddenly, I don't understand, I, I need, I'm not feeling the same that I did on the dose that I've had forever. These are the things that I would look at. I'd look at every single one of these and figure out, oh, yes, you know what? I did. I just did diet. I just did the HCG diet. Or, no, I, you know, my mother died or something like that. Or some family member, some close family member died and caused a lot of stress. That's all, all both of those things are obviously going to impact your thyroid. So you should be aware of them. And so this is what I say to a lot of patients. This is why you keep an eye on your thyroid labs at some, you know, uh, semi-frequent rate or, um, you know, semi-consistent rate. And so what I usually say in the beginning when you're getting your tests uh, done and you're trying to find that optimal dose, you probably want to get your, your blood tested every six to eight weeks. Um, but as that grows on and you start to feel better and better, you can push that back to every three to six months and, you know, do whatever you're comfortable with. In some patients, I'm fine just checking, checking twice a year. You know, I'll, if they're, if they've been stable for a long time and they're, you know, everything in their life seems to be cruising, then yes, twice a year is fine every six months. But, you know, if your if your life is you know a little bit crazier and you're just you're not really sure, then push it up push it up a little bit closer to the three month mark and and I think that'll be a, just a safer bet for you. But do keep an eye on your thyroid lab tests. This is why you should be testing them you know at some rate that you feel works best for your body. And when you do get your labs, make sure you're getting the important ones. So total T3, free T3, reverse T3, uh, free T4, and in addition to TSH, right? You want to get all these things. Um, but just realize you definitely want to be looking at all these labs. So that's pretty much it. That, that's all I got for you guys. Um, if you have, if this has happened to you, you know, if you if you fit the scenario that I just mentioned, uh, leave a comment below and kind of uh, let us know what you think happened to you at that time. And likewise, if you have any other questions, please let me know as well. Just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you uh, probably in a day or two. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.